So what is a physical pendulum? So a physical pendulum can be any rigid object that is free to oscillate about some fixed axis. All of these here are examples of physical pendulums. And I've drawn another pendulum here that has some kind of random shape, just to indicate that physical pendulums can have all different types of shapes. Now these must not be confused with the ideal or simple pendulums. And I've discussed these types of pendulums in a previous lesson. An ideal or simple pendulum has all their mass concentrated at the bottom. But physical pendulums are different. Their mass is spread out over the pendulum's volume. So if we want to find the period, we can't simply use the equation for a simple pendulum, which is t is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the gravitational acceleration. Instead, we need to use this equation where we've got the period, again, t is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the moment of inertia for this particular pendulum divided by the mass of the pendulum, the gravitational acceleration and the distance from the axis of the pendulum to the pendulum's centre of mass. Now the moment of inertia for a particular object that rotates around some kind of axis tells us how difficult it is to make the object spin around this axis. So for a thin rod like this, which will be our physical pendulum for this video here, the pivot is at the end, at the top here, and the moment of inertia for a rod where the pivot is at one end is equal to one third times the mass of the pendulum times the length of the pendulum squared. Now this value of i would be different if we were dealing with a different shape or if the pivot was in a different position. So for example, if the pivot was in the center of the pendulum rather than at the top. And we can either look up the moment of inertia for different shapes, which you can see here in this image, or we can use calculus. And I might cover in a future lesson how we can use calculus to find the moment of inertia for different types of shapes. So I'm going to draw up two pendulums here. We've got a simple pendulum where the mass is concentrated in the bob at the bottom here. And the length of the simple pendulum is indicated by L. And we've raised it up by an angle of theta. And on the right hand side, I'm going to draw a physical pendulum. But we're also going to add another variable to this physical pendulum, which is the distance from the pivot at the top here to the centre of mass for this thin rod. And it's also been raised to an angle of theta. Now I'm going to give some values to these variables here. So we've got a length of two metres for the pendulum. The mass of both pendulums here is 2.5 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the distance from the pivot to the center of mass for the physical pendulum is going to be one meter. So exactly half the length of the physical pendulum. So my question to you is which pendulum here has the largest period, given that they have the same mass, length and angle of release? How can you work this out? So first, let's write out the equations for the simple pendulum and for the physical pendulum. Now, I've already given you these equations earlier on in this video. Can you remember what the equations are? So for the simple pendulum, the period of the pendulum is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the length divided by the gravitational acceleration. The mass and the angle for a simple pendulum does not matter here. For the physical pendulum, the period t is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the moment of inertia for this particular shape, the thin rod, divided by the mass of the pendulum, the physical pendulum, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, multiplied 
by the distance from the pivot to the centre of mass. Now I've already shown you what the moment of inertia is for a thin rod where the pivot is at the end of the rod and that was equal to one third times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. And again you can either use calculus to work this out which I might go over in a future video or you can look up these values online or in a textbook. So we can rewrite our moment of inertia in our equation here with this one third mass times length squared. When we do this, we see that we can cancel out the mass terms and we can bring this one third and we can rewrite the one third here as three in the bottom half of this fraction. And we don't need to write one in the top half of the fraction. All we do now is plug in the values for both our pendulums here in our equations. So I've done this with the simple pendulum first. We've got 2 pi is equal to the square root of 2 meters, which is the length of the pendulum, divided by the gravitational acceleration. And we get a period of 2.84 seconds to three significant figures. And for our physical pendulum, we've got 2 pi multiplied by the square root of 2 meters squared divided by 3 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 1 meter which gives us an answer of 2.32 to 3 significant to 3 significant figures so out of these two pendulums here the physical pendulum will swing slightly faster